fruit into a sauce is very, very easy to do. And in the season when apples are plentiful and you can buy them at the orchard or buy them at the farmer's market, use lots and lots of applesauce, pear sauce when the Bartlett pears are in Canada. Very, very simple. Let's wash your apples. Let's have a look at the tools we're going to use. We say peel the apples or par the apples and that's a paring knife. However, if you try to use a paring knife with this, you're going to take off an awfully lot of apple along with the skin. So there are some tools called a peeler. Now watch when you buy them that you get a good one. You want, first of all, a floating blade. By the way, these don't cost very much when I say a good one. It doesn't cost very much money. This one cost, I think, a dollar and a half or something for this one. This cost of 99 cents and this one cost five dollars. So I'll show you how this works. When you peel with the peeler, you will have to get your hand up close to the, to the blade like this. Well, with this one, you can't do that. It, it's way back here and you, you can't. You can't get your hand up there. It's too uncomfortable. So fancy designs aren't necessarily in the thing to have. Even this uh, peeler, the shape of it isn't very good because it's very uncomfortable to have that thick part right up against your finger and your thumb. It's uncomfortable. So this is my favorite peeler because it's narrower in there and I can get my hand up up there to, to, to peel. Now this is for peeling anything, potatoes, apples, carrots, whatever. There are many ways to do it. I like to do this way because I can do it this way, I can do it fast, but let me show you another way. Sometimes when we were, were kids, we used to, mom, I, what she used to do was she'd go round and round the apple like this. And then we kids used to sit there and wait for that skin to come off and we'd love to eat it but sometimes we used to throw them on the table and see what letter it made to make an s did it make what it did so there's the, the long strip but i found for myself i just work faster if i take the top off the bottom off and then just do it in strips but you see why you have to have your hand up because you have to have your thumb on your fruit your potato your, your apple, potato, whatever it is that you're doing. Now let's get the cores out. And this is where your paring knife comes in. Learn how to handle your paring knife as well. Again, you have to have your hand up, up on the blade when your thumb on your, on your product. Now, very carefully. Take as little of the core out, but as little apple as you can. There are fancy little tools which for cores and things. I personally find them more trouble than worth and they waste more apple. You can put them right in the pot like that, but if I give them a couple of slices, they'll just cook a little faster. The spies make wonderful applesauce as well, all on their own. They're a good, wonderful tasting apple, so, but they just take a little longer to cook, so don't be afraid to use Max. Max and Golden Delicious are nice and sweet, but the spy is a little tartar apple. Now how much water do you put in? When you're making applesauce or any kind of a fruit sauce it's very hard to say well a quarter of a cup or half a cup or a cup because it all depends on the quantity of apples that you have in your pot. So a guide that I use is just to simply watch the, the amount that you put at the bottom and just take your fingers and kind of come down and see how much water you've got in there. And if an apple that's very soft and has a lot of juice, you'll get to know after you've done a while, like a Mac in particular, they're quite soft and juicy, so you're not going to need as much water as you would with a spy. The difference will only be in the thickness of the applesauce at the end, but if you put in too much water, you'll end up having a very sloppy applesauce, which you may not like. Now we're ready to put it on the stove, so we'll put it on an element that matches the size of the pot and put the lid on. We're going to turn it to maximum heat to bring it up to a temperature. We'll have to watch it until uh, it boils and then we will turn the heat down to uh, 
low, medium or two, just enough to keep it gently simmering until uh, it's soft. Clean up. And because apple skins are nice vegetable matter, we're not going to put them in the garbage if you have a compost tail. I think our applesauce should be ready. Oh, I think so. Wow. I'm mash it down a bit with the spoon here just to test if it see it's quite uh, it's quite soft so that's just fine now we have to make a decision about whether we put sugar in it and if so how much remember these apples that I used are very sweet apples and I personally would not put sugar in it at all but sometimes children or some people like things just that tad of sweetness so this is a quarter cup measure and if I any kind of applesauce a couple of tablespoons about that much uh, I'm going to put in less because of our apples but you always add the sugar at the end of the cooking time so add the sugar now grab your potato masher and now we mash up the apples and we'll have chunky applesauce not that pureed applesauce that, that uh, babies need sugar is well dissolved and we've got them pop it off into your serving bowl and let it cool Soak the pot in, in uh, water, warm water will do. And if you are in a real hurry, if somebody's uh, eager, you could, you could cool it in the serving dishes and it will cool a little faster so that you would have it ready for supper. But there we are, applesauce.